Boogity, what's up, Mountaintop Kids Church? How y'all pork chops doing today? Yeah, it is another round of Mountaintop Kids Church video style. Yeah, so whether you're here this morning or you're watching this video online, man, I want to give you a big what up. Yeah, man, we had some crazy weather this past week. I'm still in my hoodie and work boots and stuff because I probably got to go out and shovel again later for like the third time. Oh, I love snow, right? Remember when we asked if you guys like snow or not? And I said, I want to move to Florida where there's no snow ever. Like that was like last week. And then this week we got a big blizzard and had like two feet of snow to shovel. <laughs> Anyways, but how are you, man? Did you enjoy all the snoo out there? What? what what's that? What, what snoo, you ask? Nothing. What's new with you? <laughs> there you go. I'm not a father yet, but there's my dad joke of the day. You're welcome. Anyways, man, we want to give you a big shout out. Welcome to Mountaintop Kids Church. I am so excited. We got a brand stinking new Remember Verse today. We got our big God story and it is a doozy. I can't wait. So um, we are going to get rocking and rolling here. Are you ready? Are you ready? Turn to the person next to you and say, it's about to get real. <laughs> yeah. Now, if you're home alone watching this video by yourself, then... Just say it to yourself. It's about to get real. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Didn't want to leave you out. Anyways, man, it is time for our new remember verse. So this time, because it's a brand new verse, you have to decipher it. You're going to have to decode it. Do you think that you can crack our code? Probably it's pretty easy, but it's still going to be fun. So let's put it up here and then we're going to pause the video. Ready? Put it up, Miss Gemma. All right, there's our verse. As you can see, there are a lot of blanks. So if you are here in Mountaintop Kids Church, we're about to pass out some paper and some pencils or crayons or, or markers or I don't know what, what you kids write with these days. Um, and you have to decipher this. If you're watching this video at home, pause this video real quick, go grab some paper and you can play along with us. Sound good? All right, if you're here in class in person, man, the first person to fill in all the blanks will get a sweet, sweet prize. Yeah. All right, get ready to pause this video right now. All right, I'm about to give you three more seconds. So if you haven't paused this video, do it now. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one, and boom. Let's put up the answers. All right, this is our new remember verse for the next few weeks. Let's all read this together. Many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 21. Oh, that's good stuff. Let's read it one more time all together. I really want to hear you say this. Many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 21. All right, this verse is so good. It means that God has a plan for your life and his plan is better than all of our plans. So sometimes we've got to give up our own ideas and just trust God. You think you can do that? So I want you guys to commit this remember verse to your memory, man. Go home, read it at home this week, uh, memorize it, come back next week. And I want to hear you say it, man, because this is such a good verse. Do it. All right. Great job, you little pork chops. <laughs> Sweet. But now it is time and sing it with me for the big God story. <laughs> Our ponder point today is that God is real. Can you say that with me? God is real. Oh, uh, yeah. So we got a good, good, good Bible story today. I'm excited to really break this down. But first, man, I heard something funny the other day and I wanted to share it with you guys. There are some crazy laws out there. You know what a law is, right? It's just like a rule that, you know, a country has to follow or a state or whatever. Yeah, well, I looked up some of the weirdest laws around the world. I want to share these with you. So in Thailand, it is illegal to step on money. <laughs> like if you saw a dollar bill on the ground, I don't know why you would want to step on it anyways, but even like a penny, you can't even step on a penny. That's crazy, man. All right. In Venice, Italy, it is illegal to feed the pigeons. <laughs> I don't like pigeons, man, so I wouldn't feed them anyways, but that's just weird, right? Like, why is that a thing? Maybe say they don't like go to the bathroom all over the place. I don't know. That's gross. All right. In Singapore, it's illegal to chew gum. Yeah, man. 
everybody loves a good stick of gum, right? But you can't have it in Singapore. That's crazy, right? <laughs> All right, here's a good one from, from the great folk up north above us in Canada. Yeah, in Canada, it is illegal to spend more than 25 pennies at a time. You ever try to be that guy that like goes to a store with just a giant bag of pennies to buy something? Don't be that guy, man, especially in Canada. It's not legal. And here's the last one. In Daytona Beach, Florida, it is illegal to spit in public places. Ugh. Oh, man, that's gross. I think that should be illegal everywhere. But I'll give you a little secret. Miss Jamie hates spit. Yeah, so like when you do this, <laughs> Miss Jamie hates that. In fact, even right now, she's cringing behind the camera. <laughs> Sorry, Jamie. <laughs> Anyways, in the Bible, there were also some crazy laws sometimes. And one of those laws is something that we're going to talk about today. Do you remember last week in our Big God story when we talked about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, right? And, and how they didn't bow down to Nebuchadnezzar's statue and they got thrown in the fiery furnace, but God rescued them, right? All that good stuff. Well, they had another friend, this dude named Daniel. Somebody say Daniel. Yeah, Daniel, man. Daniel was, he was a boss, dude. He was awesome. And uh, he was there in Babylon too, and he grew old. And this is many, many years after the fiery furnace incident, but Daniel is still living in Babylon. And now there's this, this new king, right? And uh, this new king really likes Daniel. He says, Daniel, you're, you're a swell dude, right? He gives him a little pat on the back. He says, I'm proud of you, son. Way to go. And so Daniel um, is really highly favored by this new king. But the other religious leaders and, and that kind of thing of the day, man, they were, they were jealous. Somebody say, jealous. Yeah, now I know that none of us ever get jealous, right? I know, something we got to work on. But anyways, they were jealous of Daniel. And so they came up with a little plot, a plan, a trick to, to trap him and get him in trouble. Here's the thing. Daniel loved the one true God. And he worshiped him and he prayed to him. All the time. In fact, the Bible says three times a day, Daniel will go up in his house, up to the second story, right? He'd open his, his window facing the east, facing towards the direction of Jerusalem, and he'd kneel down and he'd pray to God. That's pretty cool, man. That's, that's devotion right there. Um, now, the other leaders, the ones who were jealous of him, they came to the king and they said, hey, 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 king. Um, since you're such like a, a good king, man, oh, sure, just the best king, man, oh, man, yeah, you are such a good king. You should make it a rule where um, everyone has to pray to you because you're such a good king. And the king, he, he didn't really believe in the one true God yet, and so he was like, ah, okay, yeah, yeah, why, why shouldn't they pray to me, right? And psh, silly man, right? But anyways, and so he makes this weird law, right? Just like you can't chew gum in Singapore, now here in Babylon, you have to pray to the king only. That's so weird. Here's the deal, though. Daniel wasn't going to do that. He said, you know, no matter what this world says, no matter what the rules are, I'm going to pray to the one true God only. And the other, the jealous leaders, they knew this. So they made the king make this law just to trap Daniel. And they knew that three times a day he'd walk up the stairs, open his window, pray to the east, right? And so they waited and they caught him in the act. And immediately they ran and they told the king, hey, hey, king, guess what? Guess what? Your boy Danny over there, man, he's, he's praying, but he's not praying to you. He's praying to the one true God. And so the king, he was, he was pretty upset because he liked Daniel, but he broke the law. And it was a law that the king himself made. He couldn't go back on his law now, so Daniel had to be punished. Oh, no! Now, here's the deal. Um, it wasn't like a normal punishment like you or I might get, right? It wasn't like he just pay a fine or like, you know, they put him in those little stock things. You ever seen that where you got your head through the little hole and people just come and laugh at you for like an hour? Nah, that wasn't it. They said, man, the punishment for this is death. Death by lions. What? Have you ever heard a lion roar? Man, me and Miss Jamie heard one one time. We captured this audio. Let's play that lion roar, Miss Jamie. Wow, that's crazy, right? Now, the Bible says that the king had a pit of lions, right? And it was probably just like a big hole in the ground with a bunch of lions down there. And unfortunately, they were mean to these lions. They hardly ever fed these lions to make them really, really hungry, right? Like their tummies are growling, just right? They're, they're real hungry. And uh, this way, they would gobble up whoever gets thrown down into this 
pit. And now, today, because Daniel didn't pray to the king, it was his turn. He got tossed into the lion's pit. Oh my goodness, man. I love lions. I think they're majestic. But I don't think I'd want to be in a, in a pit with a bunch of hungry lions, man. That's, I, got, I got a lot of meat on me, man. That, that sounds kind of sketchy. I don't know. Uh, but anyways, so they threw him in this pit. And then they covered the pit with this giant stone so no one could come and rescue him. And they left him there all night long. Now, the Bible says that the king and all the rulers, right, the ones who were jealous of Daniel, they come back the next day and they, they remove the stone from the pit and they're expecting to just see like Daniel's bones or something, man, I don't know. But the Bible says that God protected Daniel even in the pit of lions, right? Oh, wow, that's awesome. That's crazy. Man, there was no wounds, no scratch marks or bite marks. There are no chunks taken out of Daniel, nothing like that, man. He was completely whole. In fact, he was probably down there playing with the lions, right? Just petting them and cuddling them and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be cool. Also scary, but cool. I bet he was like riding them around the little pit, man. I don't even know. But he was he was friends with the lions. He was totally cool. And so they brought him out of the pit and they said, oh my goodness, God protected you, man. That means that God is real. He says, the God that you pray to, Daniel, is way more real than me. He can do mighty things. He can do miracles. He made the hungry, hungry lions not eat you. God is real. Wow. Man, even though the king put this crazy law into effect, our God is real and he is bigger than all that. So can you say our ponder point with me one more time? Ready? God is real. That's right, man. And just like God saved Daniel from the lion's den, God can do miracles even here and now in your life. So here in Mount Top Kids Church, if you're here in person or watching this video online, I just want to encourage you that God is real and that he's got your back. So pray to him, man, and trust him. Just like our remember verse says, trust his will, his purposes for your life because he is real. Sound good? All right, guys, that's all the time we have for in our big God story. So as always, I just want to close in a prayer of blessing over all y'all. Yeah, so what do we do when we pray? We bow our eyes and we close our heads <laughs> and we talk to God. Let's pray. Dear God, I thank you that you are real. God, I believe in you no matter what this world says. And I pray that all of our friends here in Mountaintop Kids Church do too. God, I pray that you would just show up in a real way in their lives and that they would trust your plan for them. I thank you and I praise you for everything you've blessed us with and everything you're going to continue to bless us with. I pray that you would keep all of my friends here safe during this pandemic and COVID and all that stuff, God. And Lord, that we would just grow closer to you because you are real. I thank you in Jesus name. And everybody said, amen and amen. All right, pork chops, man. That's it. That's all the time we have for. If you're here in Mountain Top Kids Church and we have some time left, we'll play a game in person. But if you're watching this video online, man, just know we love you and miss you and cannot wait to see you. <laughs> but otherwise, peace out, y'all.